Yeah, it's like your light time. Yes, it's, it's, it's like your light time. So me. today it's me. we are doing. Me. We are at a mission. The San Juan Capistrano mission tour. Yeah. And that's it behind us. That's it right there. And there's like bells over there too. Yeah. We're gonna check it out. By the so way, enjoy you guys want to see something really blog. cool? Um, Go for it. We have like these little remote things. Yeah. So like. And there's like an audio in these maps. And we have a map. And so the map's like, going to tell us what like areas press, have the uh, audio. And then we're going to press the number and it's going to And gonna then it'll tell us about it. So we'll definitely have you guys hear everything so you guys don't have to buy it yourself. All right. Enjoy. You're welcome. So this is pretty cool. This must have been the entrance to this mission right here. Look at that. All right, we're gonna press one six. Okay. Dates. Stay here at the entrance. In 1797, work began on the church. The building took nine years to complete. It was the largest structure in Alta California at the time. It is said to have had seven domes and a 70-foot freestanding bell tower. Six years after the church's completion, on December 8, 1812, a morning mass was being celebrated. Suddenly, an earthquake struck. Walls collapsed, jamming exit doors. The roof cracked, falling down on the trapped worshippers. Forty right people died. This way. And it doesn't go as far as that wall because that wall is still standing. So it comes across here. Father Jose Señor, president of the missions at the time of the church's destruction. There was a statue the mission in of San Juan Capistrano has in one set. minute seen its famous it church of stone and wood converted into a useless heap. The ruins of the Great Stone Church are included in the World Monuments Fund's top 100 most endangered places. So please be careful during your visit. Now let's join Michelle Lawrence, Executive Director of the Mission, as she guides us through the ruins of the Great Stone Church. Press 161 on your player now. Ooh, okay, 161 on my player now. The historic mission, the Great Stone Church. A lot of the questions we have regarding this are why are you going to rebuild them? What is it going to be finished? It's important to say that these are ruins and they're so not going to be You don't rebuild Stonehenge. Look at the bells to your right. Oh, nothing. Walk over to them. To the right, you immediately see some bells. Where are the... Reportedly, the bell tower was visible from nine miles away, and the bells could be heard from an even greater... Bells? I've seen these on Hillhauser. They were placed along El Camino Real, the original road, where all the missions are. And you still see some sporadically in the city. I see some in Whittier. The mission of San Juan Capistrano, which is about to be established in the valley of the same name, or in its vicinity between... Mission San Juan Capistrano was the seventh of 21 missions established in California. On November 1st, 1776, Father Junipero Serra led Father Gregorio Amurio, six Spanish soldiers, a muleteer, and eight Native Americans into the San Juan Capistrano Valley. A previous attempt to establish a mission here had been abandoned after an uprising of Native Americans at Mission San Diego in 1775. One year after the uprising, Father Serra and his small band of missionaries returned to the valley, dug up the bell that the previous missionaries had buried, and celebrated Mass under a tree-shaded arbor. According to the agreement made between the captain, Comandante Don Fernando de Riviera, more than 
250 years after its founding, the mission remains a place where people from all over the world come to rest, pray, reflect, and learn under the shade of its tiled roofs and covered arches. Wow. Step inside one of the oldest buildings in California. Serra Chapel was built in 1778. In 1935, Father Arthur J. Hutchinson asked local mechanic Rudy Yorba to dig up an old drainage pipe that had become plugged. What Yorba discovered in his dig, what you are looking at now, surprised both Yorba and Father Hutchinson, the drainage system, and the workshops and storehouses of the mission's early years. Find the metal tallow vats. Tallow making was one of the most important industries at the mission. Animal fat from sheep and cattle was melted down in large kettles to make tallow. Tallow was used for candles, soap, grease, and ointments. Please watch your step when exploring the historic Mission Industrial Center. 72, let's check it out. These are the Catalan furnaces. They were the remains of the oldest metal furnaces in California. These furnaces were used to smelt metal ore. They could reach a temperature of up to 3,650 degrees Fahrenheit. To the right of the furnaces are the remains of the blacksmithing workshops, including the area where the forge was kept. Outdoor kitchen. It's kind of interesting how they have like almost like a drainage system. And then here, it's enclosed and protected, it says adobe brick wall.
So dated in the 1790s. So this is an adobe brick mold used to shape the mud into rectangular blocks. Okay. I can see why they would use a mold. Well, I mean they were at one time. I'm sure they, you know, eroded. Again, dated 1790s. This is the exterior wine vat. The original building on this site, the Mission's West Wing, was built from 1780 to 1786. It was originally used for warehouses. The West Wing was rebuilt in the 1970s. In this particular room, you will find exhibits on the life and art of the Ahashaman people, also called Juaneños. Objects here include baskets, mortar and pestles, and abalone shells. The Ahashemen are the indigenous people of the San Juan Capistrano Valley. It was their labor that built this mission and made this valley fertile. They lived in small dwellings called quichas, an example of which you will find out. This room offers exhibits on the mission Spanish period from 1776 through 1822. Look for a sunken bricked area at the far end of the room. This is a historic wine yeah. vat. The California wine industry was actually yes. born at Mission San Juan Capistrano. In 1779, Father Pablo de Mugartegui brought grape cuttings to California and planted them here in San Juan Capistrano. Ultimately, grapevines were planted at nearly all of California's missions. Wine was a major commodity in Spain and Spanish America. It was used not only as a daily drinking beverage, but also at Holy Mass. Reports on the quality of wine made at the missions vary greatly, from excellent to awful. Winemaking continued at Mission San Juan Capistrano for over 60 years until 1842. In this room, you will also find objects from the Spanish period, including silver altarpieces, religious statuary, and vestments worn by mission priests. One of the most important priests associated with this mission was, of course, Father Junipero Serra. In fact, Father Serra named this mission San Juan Capistrano. How did Father Serra come up with the names for the different missions? If you'd like to hear Father Arthur Holquin's answer, press 62 on your player now. Peter Marie Romero remembers a Swallows Day festival during her youth, nearly 70 years ago. We used to have plays right before Swallows Day, and we used to have a play where all the kids were dressed up like swallows, and they would all be dancing, and they used to say, Good morning, Mr. Swallow, come from far away. We are glad to see you on St. Joseph's Day. Flipping in the sunshine, we can see you all. Building up your houses on the mission wall. <laughs> the festival featured songs, traditional dances, the ringing of the mission's bells, and the crowning of a king and queen. It would culminate in the Swallows Day Parade. Mission architecture, the kitchen. Hmm. Ooh. Oh, wow. Well, it's like... Or in a big fireplace or something. This building was originally used as soldiers' barracks. Here you will find exhibits that detail the life of the common soldiers at this far-flung outpost. These include everything from weaponry to rudimentary beds. 
very few soldiers, no more than 11 at a time, were stationed at the mission. Generally, this was not a problem, as life at the mission was pretty peaceful. But there was one notorious occasion when their services were called upon and found lacking. On December 14, 1818, Hippolyte Bouchard, an Argentine pirate, sailed into Capistrano Bay. Bouchard's ships had already attacked Monterrey and Santa Barbara. Peter Corney, one of Bouchard's cohorts, gave this account of Bouchard's encounter with the people of San Juan Capistrano. The Commodore sent his boat on shore to say that if they gave us an immediate supply of provisions, we would spare their town. To which they replied that we might land if we pleased, and they would give an immediate supply of powder and shot. Bouchard did not take kindly to San Juan Capistrano's show of defiance. He and his men sacked and pillaged the town over the course of three nights. Legend has it that Bouchard buried some of his treasure here. Throughout the 19th century, several holes were dug in the valley by hopeful treasure seekers, but nothing has ever been found. This millstone, or Molino de Olivas, is similar to those used for crushing olives for olive oil. One of the first things the Spanish missionaries did when they arrived here was to plant olive trees. By 1830, the mission controlled several hundred thousand acres. Cattle, sheep, horses, and hogs roamed the mission's lands, and pear and olive orchards thrived here. Generations and generations of San Juan Capistrano residents have since participated in the olive harvest. The one thing we had to do every year was pick olives. Jerry Nieblas, special projects manager at the mission, was born and raised in San Juan Capistrano. His father and mother also worked at the mission. The Nieblas family has given over 125 years of service to this mission, and it's something we're really proud of. Jerry remembers his childhood in the 1950s when his grandmother would cure 12 gallons of Capistrano olives each year. And that's a long process dealing with lies and, and soakings and washings and salting. And, and then we would have to be there to help cleanse them and washing from barrel to barrel. So that was industry to us. <laughs> but it was fun. And I never looked at that as work because the family came together. We made a game out of it. Come on, baby. All right, we want to now look for the cemetery. This is the back side of the ruins. Oh, I see. I was wondering what that was. I see all these nests. Interesting. Approximately 2,000 people, mostly indigenous Ahashiman people, are buried in the cemetery. The first person buried here died in 1781. The last person buried here in 1933 was Father O'Sullivan, who worked tirelessly to bring this mission back to life. Look for the large stone monument to Father O'Sullivan in the middle of the cemetery. When he was a child, Jerry Niebla's grandmother would place a single red candle on Father O'Sullivan's grave every year on March 19th, Father O'Sullivan's birthday. Finally, when I got to be aware of what she was doing with this candle, I said, Nana, why are you lighting that candle? Why do you put a candle on Father O'Sullivan's grave? She goes, it's not just for him. It's for all our ancestors that are buried here. If you would like to hear more about Father O'Sullivan, the great restorer, press 141 on your player now. Well, that ends our tour at the San Juan Capistrano Mission. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe.
that's it.